Okay, uh, engineering students, I want to share with you a little tutorial today on how to take Onshape, the online cloud-based CAD system, and actually, first of all, create a part, and then take that part and actually create an engineering drawing with multi-views with it. So let's go back up to our own shape here. You're in your own shape account. We are going to create a document because own shape calls everything a document. You're going to title it by something probably with IED in it and perhaps the assignment number like 109C and then perhaps, I don't know, your initials or your last name uh, just to make sure you know it's yours compared to all the other peoples that I received. So once you click OK there, it's going to put you into the part studio. And this is where we can actually create 3D models. Generally, with the 3D models, we don't need the right and the top planes to draw on. So I'm going to come over here in the browser and I'm going to click on the eyeball. I'm going to turn off the top and I'm going to turn off the right. And that simply leaves the front plane available for me to actually draw on. So in order to draw on it, I have to click on the sketch button to go into the sketch mode. I click on sketch and I click on the plane that I want to draw on, which will be the front. Notice that adds the sketch plane along with the front plane. Now, in order to draw things to perspective, I need to look straight down upon it or the normal view. So I'm going to hit the letter N on my keyboard and that's going to bring me into the normal view. Now, in the past, we have used the rectangle tool to draw. We've used the circle and we've used the polygon. Today, we're going to use one that's much more valuable to draw irregular shapes, and that's the, the line tool. So I'm going to click on the line tool. I'm going to come down at the bottom. I'm going to click where I start, and I'm going to try to draw a five-inch line. That's okay if you go off the, uh, the plane because the plane is really infinite. But I'm going to try to draw five, but I can't really exact, act, exactly get five, so I'm going to click somewhere close. Now, while this number here is in a box, you can actually change that number to actually be an exact dimension. So I'm going to click on five and enter, and that makes that dimension exactly five. Okay. Then I'm going to notice I'm still in the line command because i got this little spider web hanging on, so I'm going to turn and go straight up. I'm trying to go up one inch, but I can't, so I'm going to click once, and I'm going to type a one in the, in the box and hit enter, and that makes that line exactly one inch. To make my step, I'm going to go in and click. I'm going to make that box exactly one inch. I'm going to go up again and click, and I'm going to make that box one inch. I'm going to go to the left again and click and make that one. Notice I'm not trying to get exact numbers. I'm just getting somewhere close and I'm making sure they're 90 degree corners. Now, once I get to this point, I'm at the top of my part, so I need to go back to where I started. So that's gonna be exactly three inches away since I've already come back two inches. So I'm gonna click once, I'm gonna make this box three. And now when I come down, that should align me perfectly with where I started down here. Notice when these two points align perfectly, it actually turns into an orange box which allows it to uh, say these are coincident and they're right on top of each other. So I'm going to click and notice that completes my enclosed polygon and it turns gray to let you know it is extrudable, that you do have a closed shape. Now I'm going to click on the green check mark. Don't forget to close your sketch out by saying I'm done with my sketch. I'm going to actually go to the view cube box and I'm going to pull down and choose the isometric view so I can see this from an angle. And then I'm going to do the second step of creating a 3D model. I'm going to click on the extrude button, which is right next to the sketch button. I'm going to click on extrude and I'm going to tell it what to extrude. I want to extrude this shape here. And notice it automatically jumps out about one inch, but I actually want to make this three inches thick to make it look like figure seven. And now we've got our set of steps. Again, once you finish the extrusion, don't forget to check the green check mark to say I'm done extruding on extrusion one. Once you have your first extrusion, you don't really need the front plane anymore as a guide. So I'm going to go here and with the eyeball, I'm going to turn off the front plane. And now I simply have my steps. Now in this assignment 109C, you are going to have to add a sketch to this surface and you're going to have to add a circle and you're going to have to negatively extrude that or remove material to make a hole going through the part. 
I'll leave that up to you guys. What I want to show you also is how do we take this part that we've just created and create a multi-view engineering drawing automatically. So down at the bottom, you'll notice we have the part studio and we have the assembly, which we're not using right now. That's for putting together multiple parts. We're going to come over here to the plus sign and I'm going to click create insert new element. I want to insert a drawing, so I'm going to create a drawing. You're going to have several options up here for templates. The one we use most often is the ANSI A inch. ANSI is American National Standard Identification and size A means an eight and a half by 11 paper and we're doing it in inches. So this is the template we want to use and then we want to click OK. Now for some reason it's taking a very long time to load these templates, sometimes up to two minutes. Well, I spoke too soon. Look at there, they might have got it fixed. Sometimes you may have a problem with these templates loading, taking a long time to load, but this one looks like it popped in here pretty quick, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to be able to insert something into this template. And if, if this little box don't show up, you will come up here and click on Insert View, Insert, and what you're going to insert is actually this part that you've just created, okay? So if you don't see this automatically pop up here, you want to click on Insert View, Insert, and then click on the part that you just created. Now you notice what happens when I click on that part, it automatically grabs the front view and makes it a scale of one to two. The front view always goes in the lower left corner of your white space, not down here because we may use that for notes. So we're going to put it in the lower left corner of our white space available to us. And I'm going to click once and that's going to create the front view. Then I'm going to come above it here and I'm going to click again and that's going to create the top view. Now really there's no guide as to how far up you go, just wherever you think looks nice. I'm going to come back and click on the front view again, and then I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to click on the side view. I'm going to come back to the front view and click again. Then I'm going to go up here to the upper right corner, and guess what? It creates our isometric view. So there you have almost.